you know, it's been a crazy 12 days. You know, the, the, the world has changed as we know it. Um, I feel like for the first time probably in my coaching career, we're playing catch up in terms of what to do, how to do it, how to respond, how to answer questions with so many things up in the air. So it's really been a change um, learning every day as we go along. Uh, feel especially bad for our guys just being kind of in limbo. Um, we started online classes yesterday. We've checked in with all our guys to make sure they've had no problems going forward. Um, currently working on different ideas for them to continue to train and, and stay in shape. And I think by doing that, especially with the lockdown in our state, you know, the physical part of it is very important for them. So, um, you know, getting up and moving, whether it's going out for a run, whether it's going in the basement and lifting weights or getting on a bike, I think that's all critical for them right now and will be part of the plan. My concern is the student athletes, right? They're the ones who put the heart and soul into it. They're the ones who have been training their entire life for this opportunity. And to have it taken away so quickly, you know, and we were, you know, we heard the news on Thursday, uh, I think it was March 8th or 9th, and we were set to leave the next week for our national tournament. So we were literally a week out of competition starting the tournament. So my concern is for them, you know, and, and there's there's a lot of, I guess, disbelief, you know, to start. And I think there's some, you know, hard feelings. And I, and I think as these guys kind of work their way through it, um, you know, this is an unprecedented thing. And as I told them, you know, we're all hoping this is a one-time-a-generation thing where this doesn't happen again. But it is uncharted territory for all of us. I especially feel that bad for them. You know, and I'll survive. You know, I mean, um, I've been doing this long enough and have been to enough national tournaments. You know, my my main concern and my main um, focus is making sure these guys got through it. You know, breaking the news wasn't an easy thing for us. Um, having a conversation with them was tough. And, and it was, uh, you know, I, I know how important it is to them. I know how long they've trained. I know they put their heart and soul and a lot of years into doing this. So, you know, my concern and my focus was them and their well-being at the time. Yeah. When, I mean, you, you talked about how hard it was to, to kind of break the news to them. As a coaching staff, how do you guys even, you know, formulate something to say to these guys who, as you said, like, worked their whole lives to get to this point? Yeah, the interesting thing was with the timing of this whole thing is that, um, you know, the previous night we started watching some dominoes fall, the NBA postponing their season, you know, the NHL postponing their season. We got up in the morning, there was different travel plans for us. As, as we were finalizing our travel plans to go to Minneapolis for the national tournament, you know, commercial air, air travel got taken away. And I was in, I went to my supervisor's office. We discussed alternative travel plans to get there. And my assumption, after hearing all the news from the day before, was that I was going to his office to find out that we weren't having a national tournament. At that time, the determination had not been made. Uh, we discussed alternative travel plans, trying to put everything on hold. And about 2 o'clock that day, word started leaking, you know, and, and I think some coaches had told their teams the NCAA tournament wasn't going to happen. We were called to a meeting at the Smith Center by Josh discuss kind of what's happened and, and what this whole thing's going to look like going forward in the immediate. Um, so shortly after we were having practice, um, as a staff, we really didn't have time to talk about it much other than, you know, I, I kind of got a hold of the other coaches and said, look, guys, this this is what's going on. we got to get the team together. And I think at that point everybody knew exactly what was going on. And, and, and again, the decision had started leaking a little bit. You know, and social media and text messages and relationships, prior relationships, the word started traveling fast. So I, I don't know that what we told them at 3.30 or 4 o'clock was the first they heard of it, but it was the official word from their staff that, that this was, in fact, happening. Um, you know, I talked to, to Travis and Eric, and they, they both, I mean, I've been in that wrestling room, you know, a bunch of times and there's always great energy and always people talking and can you kind of describe you know how that energy was after you guys had to tell them um you know that i mean they won't be competing those seven players or those seven wrestlers well it was we had eight actually uh, oh, luffman did get in the tournament so we did have eight um so 
So yeah, I mean, having 80 percent of your team qualify for the national tournament is pretty good. So obviously there was some excitement. Um, you know, we we had a good number of guys going. Um, you know, I think there was a sense of deflation, even though you know the, the cloud had followed everybody into the, the the wrestling room where we met. That this was happening, this was taking place. Uh, this is in fact real. You know, so there was kind of a cloud of uh, you know pressure you know, with, with guys walking into the practice room, including the coaches. Just, we can't believe this is happening. You know. It's, at that time, there was so much excitement about this national tournament in particular. We were doing it in an NFL stadium for the first time. Um, you know, we had, I think, there was over 40,000 all-session tickets sold already. So this incredible platform for us to be on, this incredible excitement surrounding the event. Um, you know, these guys have worked so hard to get there. They put in, you know, a ton of time and... and you know, basically we're there and we're, we're almost going to start our resting, you know, where we weren't going to push guys very hard. We're going to have another maybe day or two of hard workout um, before we started resting them a little bit. So the work was done, you know, and, and um, you know, it, there, there was a real sense of deflation and obviously disappointment and, you know, anger. I mean, you can use, use a million adjectives, but the reality is that that, you know, what, what I felt like and what I told them is, is, you know, in those situations, your parental instincts kind of take over. And so I kind of felt like I did as a father, where you have a young child who's sick and they're hurting and you wish you could take that pain out of them and carry the burden for them. That's how I felt looking into those guys' eyes, telling them, you know, this wasn't going to happen this week. And I, you know, I, I wish I could take that pain and carry the burden for you. I wish I could take that hurt away. But, you know, it, it's, this is a reality and it's going to hurt for a while and it's going to take some time to, for you guys to, to shake it off because, you know, this stuff, the, the, those conversations are no fun. There's a lot of great parts about the job. Those types of things are not fun. Coach Nico Hebe, coming over with Fox, Illinois. You mentioned the reaction when you had to tell the guys. Have you heard back from any of them, maybe those seniors in particular? have Has the reaction kind of changed at all here, um, you know, a week or two after the fact? Um, I don't think, I, I think there's still kind of a disbelief you know, surrounding the whole thing, to be honest. And I, and I guess the way I would answer your question is um, we've had some communication, and I think Again, those guys are going to need a little bit of time to deal with it. Um, so I don't know, you know, at 22 years old or 23 years old as a senior, um, you know, experience is a hard thing to teach. And I think over time, especially, you know, a year from now, two years from now, when we know, you know six months from now, when we know the seriousness of this whole thing, I think maybe it will soften the blow a little bit. But in, in in the immediate, I, I really think it's a difficult thing for them to, to have to internalize and, and, and deal with, you know, and, and thankfully, um, you know, after our meeting, that, you know, we had another day of class on Friday, and then everybody went home for spring break, so, you know, for me, a little bit, having that family support, going home to his family and friends and everything was a big deal, and I think even though you are 22, even though you're, you're a, you know, or 18 in some cases qualifying for the national tournament, even though you're these tough college athletes, especially in our sport, you know, they're kind of known as being tough, hard-minded guys, um, you still need your mother and father and brothers and sisters and friends to get through things like this. Hey, Jim, this is Sky Ritchie from the News Gazette. You know, one of you know, the guys that qualified for nationals was Justin Cardani, and he had a really good redshirt season a year ago. What did what did he do this season to maybe build off that and, and improve and you know, get to the level where he is going to compete you know, for a national championship? You know, Cardani's good. He's just, he, he's just one of those guys I think a little bit has been overlooked because um, – you know, the advantage we have we had with him, obviously Justin's a local kid and we've known him for a long time. But 
you know, he, he wasn't, um, you know, all this raking stuff that goes on. You know, he wasn't probably nearly highly as ranked as he should have been. But he was good. And I think it, the, the red shirt year behind Travis was a really positive thing for him to kind of build up physically. Um, I think more than anybody on our team, he had quietly had a very, very good year. Uh, the unfortunate thing for him, uh, first round of the Big Ten tournament, he did hurt his knee and, and was really severely limited in what he could do in terms of competing during the tournament. But um, to answer your question more directly, I think skill-wise, Justin's very good um, for a guy of his weight class. Speed is very important. He's got great speed, great quickness. He really understands wrestling very well. You know, he can get off the bottom. He can ride. He makes good decisions most of the time. For a young kid, those are really positive things. And the biggest thing, and, and I think, you know, the lesson with him is listen. You know, the guy asks questions. He listens. He tries things you ask him to try. Um, he's realistic in that he knows you know, if he wrestles on a Friday and then wrestles again on Sunday, he's asking questions on Monday, how do I fix this? This is this is where I have problems, how do I fix this? So a guy like that is going to continue to get better. And, and he, um, you know, as good as he is and as well as he did this year, he still lacks a little confidence. And I think that will come more with maturity, or at least I hope it does, because he is very good. Um, he just doesn't want to believe it yet. I guess sort of related to that, you know, Luke Lawson being your, your other your local kid, and you know, he got into the NCAAs. So what was his freshman season like, maybe coming in, you know, after some, some real success at the high school level and then you know, being able to transition you know, into, into having similar type success you know, in college? Yeah, um, I think Luke's, Luke's in a little bit of the same boat where, you know, Mitt Earl, in terms of the confidence thing, he's really as good as he, as well as he's done, and as good as he is at the sport, he still lacks a little bit of confidence. And I think, as an 18 year old kid wrestling in our conference, um, you know, I, I certainly understand maybe a little bit of self doubt, but you know, skill wise, he's very good. Same way, asked a lot of questions, unbelievably hard worker. You know, he um, it was funny that. The day after the we got home from the Big Ten tournament, you know, we got home late. Everybody's tired. Everyone's beat up. Everyone's sore. Luffman's in the weight room at six thirty, um, doing doing a, a full workout. You know, so we kind of told him, well, you, you need to calm down here for a couple of days and let your body rest. But the work ethic is is phenomenal. Um, the guy knows how to win, and again, um, asks a lot of questions, gets better. Um, you know, and physically, he's got a, a huge upside. You know, he's a big kid anyway, but he's 18. You know, so I think as he develops physically, he gets stronger. Um, he, he's going to be a superstar. All right, anything else for Coach? Yeah, Coach, um, with, with how young the team was, you know, you had you know, three redshirt freshmen and a, a true freshman starting. Was there, did you, you know, experience throughout the, the whole season any of the, the senior leader starters on your team? Like, um, what was that relationship between them, you know, trying to, to make sure that, you know, the freshmen were always put in their right foot forward and they were competing, you know, at their highest level? Well, I think what helps, you know, we, we had, you know, a hand, we had a few seniors in there, too, that, that had great experience. You know, I think Travis Piotrowski, um, you know, really kind of helped Justin. Between Justin's redshirt gear when Travis was starting and Justin was sitting behind him as a redshirt, I think having the opportunity to work out with Travis. And I think even this year, you know, Travis kind of took on a role that, that maybe he watched out for Cardani. And when Cardani was kind of asking questions or uncertain about things, I think, you know, from my observation, Travis did a really good job of, kind of put the kid at ease, explaining to him, look, this is how it's going to go. This is the way it is. It's really not a, as big a deal as you make it. It's just kind of your perception of it. You know, we're going into wrestle at Penn State, you know, um, calming him down and making sure he knows that the people sitting on top of you in the stands, 
um, you know, it, it's okay. Just do your thing, do your job, and, and, and everything will be okay. I think Travis did a really good job. And I think guns are really, you know, um, a little bit the same. You know, you, you have guys like, like Travis and Baroni and Gunther in the lineup that win a lot of matches. You know, it takes the pressure off those young guys, I think, in, in my experience and, and in my opinion. It takes a little bit of um, pressure off those guys that they know there's other guys who are experienced, other guys who are really good, other guys who are going to win a lot of matches. Um, you know, and, and your, your job is to c- contribute to the team effort. You know, it's not like going into a meet, they got to think, if I lose, we're done. You know, they know we have a bunch of good guys, and those guys, I think, kind of display their their experience with them. You know, I think they did a good job sharing their experience, um, letting them know what to expect, what not to expect, keeping them calm at times. Um, you know, even on road trips. Some of those road trips are horrible. We went to Rutgers in Maryland, and, you know, we're, we're in a hurry to get there. We're in a hurry to get to the airport. It's just... You know, they did a good job kind of keeping them calm and and making sure they, you know, between airports and vans and competitions and everything else, they did a pretty good job um, kind of keeping those guys' emotions in check, I think.